How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this week's episode of Baking with Bill, we are cooking up a delicious diff drop. Now, uh, in all seriousness, I do have a diff drop here. I'm going to powder coat it right now. I just have it cooking to off gas. So when we do bake it again with the powder coat on there, there's nothing that causes bubbles or anything like that. Now, I ordered this from Broken Innovation. I saw on Bronco 6G that he started making these uh, and I ordered it. I've actually had it sitting here for a while. I uh, just haven't gotten around to it. Now you can order it in plain steel or the, he offers it painted. I decided to go ahead and order it plain steel because I wanted to go ahead and powder coat it. While we're waiting for that to cook, let's talk why you would want a diff drop to start with. Now, as you may or may not know, on this Bronco, I have the Eibach coilovers. In the front, I have them maxed out, so we're at about a four inches of lift. Overstock non-Sasquatch. It would be about three inches over Sasquatch. And if we look at our drive shaft, we see it goes over and up and then over again. Now that's not a bad angle. The more more lift you have, the worse angles those can get. The angle that's at now, that's not a problem. Most companies that are making lifts, they will do up to a four inch lift. Um, Cause that is kind of the safety zone. Once you go outside of that, you are definitely putting those axles at more risk. Under normal circumstances, they're perfectly fine. There may be a little bit of extra wear on them because of the angles, but the angles aren't so extreme that it's putting excessive wear on them. So under normal circumstances, if this is flat, that gives you this much, however many inches of up travel and down travel equally in these joints. So as you're going over bumps and everything, you have so much travel up, so much travel down and everything. Now, when you lift a vehicle, basically you're lifting this side up, this side staying the same, in the same spot. So now we're always at kind of this downward angle. That means we have a whole lot more up travel, but we don't have as much down travel as we had so that's a bit limiting if you're going over things your tires dropping down and it's got extra weight because if you lifted your car you probably put a heavier tire on there it's pushing down and most likely you're going to be hitting those extreme angles when you're going over bumps going over obstacles anything like that that's when you're going to hit those extreme angles where these aren't turning well and you're going to wear out the insides of your axles a lot faster. If you look at lift kits that are over four inches, you'll see most of them have like a cross bar here that go across where your lower control arms will come down and there will be a cross bar that goes here also lowers your differential down so that you're put you're moving all that so all the geometry stays flat but you're just lifting the bronco up on top of that it's very rare that you will see a a lift under four inches that accounts for that and actually brings the differential down what we have baking is actually exactly that and what it is, it's just going to be where our differential, which is right here, is mounted. It's going to lower that mounting point. So we're going to bring this differential down. It's cooked it at 400 for 10 minutes. So for right now, we're just we're baking and you see the powder starting to melt and starting to gloss over and look pretty but still not quite to temp yet 
All right, there we go. Now we're finally up to temperature and we'll start a timer for 10 minutes. Had our piece at 400 for 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that cool down now. All right, got the car pulled in the garage. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking out the mounting bolts for the diff. And I just have the jack on the diff itself keep it from falling out <laughs> rest it there and then I'm gonna get these rear two bolts that's right there above the drive shaft kind of I think you can see them pretty good right there so I'm gonna work on getting those two bolts up first normally you would also have your sway bar right here. Uh, the solid sway bar wasn't really in the way, but I removed that for other testing. And so I have that off. If you have like the Badlands or first edition that's got the sway bar disconnects here, it may be a little harder to even access these. But, I know with the sway bar attached, I was able to get these off before. They're just a little awkward. Well, it's good to know that. I put that on there nice and... <laughs> Those two bolts are out right there. I'm going to go ahead and come around to the front and disconnect these other fasteners. Come around here to the passenger side. And we just got this bolt here, which I believe is 13. Yep. So I'm not going to take that bolt all the way out yet. I'm going to... There's room for this diff to drop uh, with where it's at now but if it does fall happen to fall it's not going to fall all the way out so I'll just leave that bolt in there it should give me enough maneuverability for now All right, so right now the only thing holding the diff in is a uh, memory. We can go ahead and remove the rest of this mount. And then we have this bolt that goes all the way through. I went ahead, took these two bolts out. There are tabs up top that are connected. Uh, I'm not gonna, they're not exactly fun to, to mess with. So I'm just going to And as you can see, that's apparently far enough. To be able to... So now we can see that's the OEM mount. You can see we're moving the mounting point from that where that bolt is down to there. So it's not a huge difference, but it's enough. We have this piece here and it's got a pin hole there. And there is a pin on the back side of this mount that that should line right up with. Got the bolts going, start it there. 
yeah i don't want to go ahead and tighten those down completely yet i'm gonna go ahead and get everything else on and kind of in position and then we can kind of come back through i go ahead and take this bolt all the way out now and we are going to be replacing it I'm putting so we've got that it's going to fit right on top and then we have this spacer on top of that and then a new bolt and marsha that's going to go through there and then mount back up there into that hole so we're just putting that spacer in there let me go ahead and get this tightened back up so now we have that spaced out there um and we just got to put this front mount on now on the oem mount we had these nuts tack welded on there uh which we don't have on that but the kit that's why the kit comes with new washers new nuts we should hopefully be able to slide this up into position get those bolts pushed through Hopefully, this just goes up there. We can get that first bolt in there. Yeah, I'm really surprised how, uh, Easily everything lined up. So far. Without having to put too much of a fight. I think I just got lucky with the... Because <laughs> I moved, I lowered the jack down once. Getting that spacer in there. And I think I just got lucky with where I dropped it to because everything lined up perfectly. And we still got to get everything tightened down, but I mean, that's, that's pretty much the right position. All right, so I got everything put back together, tightened down. Now, depending on what bash plates or anything you have uh you may have a hard time here now the oem mount does have a nut cert right here and as you see i don't have anything there um i have this bodyguard plate i got these three bolts in and that's going to be good enough for now and then the oem uh, skid plate over over the drive unit is there you if you noticed before this was up higher above this now it's kind of flush along the bottom so it does potentially open up that for being damaged but that is where it's bolted together and about over an inch thick of material before it actually gets to the drive unit so i don't think you're really gonna damage that 
but uh, yeah overall you do lose a little bit of clearance right here but it's not a significant amount and I think to help protect your your CVs a little bit that it's well worth it uh, you can get upgraded CVs that will also allow for extra play um, if you have bad angles but the way I see it is well now that I've got the angles a little bit better if I were to do upgraded axles they would be even better than just putting good axles on a bad angle uh, that can handle it uh, it's, you're still going to put extra stress on it even though they can handle it but if you fix the angle first and then put the axles on there then you're kind of setting it up for a better long-term usability of your new axles but uh or new drive shafts or whatever you want to call them cv joints um but yeah uh here i'm just going to like i said there's not a, a nut cert there or anything i'm going to just drill a hole and uh get a self-tapping screw or bolt to put in there uh, i don't have any so i'm going to go to the hardware store and see what i can find uh before i start drilling any holes so i know what size hole i need to drill it's not going anywhere with those three bolts on anyway and this is pretty thick steel so that's not super flexible and then there's other that's going to hold this corner tight and then the other three corners are oh yeah and bash blade are held in there so i think that's going to be fine until i can get to a hardware store and i said i'll just get a decent self-tapping screw or bolt that i can that'll fit in there and tighten down that corner just not a huge difference but just a little bit of peace of mind hopefully help uh add some longevity to the axles or to the joints so we'll see i'll let you know how things go over time no news is good news on this uh obviously i hope not to blow out any axles and hopefully this helps prevent that in the long run but we'll see hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit the thumbs up button leave a comment down below it really helps with getting the videos out there and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time